Hey guys, um, I wanted to come on here and share. Um, I wanted to just expose the enemy's plans. Um, I want you all to be equipped um, to know how specifically the enemy um, is attacking us, the children of God, in this hour so that the enemy's plans can be made known and we can know, we can see clearly what's going on in the battle. Um, so that we won't be thrown into confusion and discouragement. So um, I've been walking through through this myself lately. So um, God just led me to um, Nehemiah chapter 3, um, verse 33 through the end of chapter, uh, Nehemiah chapter 4. And it just made known, he, you know, everything that is hidden will be revealed. God is um, the God of truth. He is truth and he is light and there is no darkness in him. So when we trust him and when we take our, um, our confusion and our discouragement and we come to God, he is faithful to expose the enemy's plans and equip us with what we need to overcome with what we need um, for victory. So um, I don't believe that I'm the only one. I, I truly felt like... Um, God showed me this to help me, but then to also help equip you. Because a lot of us lately have been feeling discouraged and confused um, about where we are, what we're supposed to be doing. Um, are we doing the right thing? Should we go back? Like, I, it's it hasn't been easy. And I just want to equip you and encourage you. So starting with Nehemiah chapter 3 starting with uh, verse 33. But when Sanvalot heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he was furious, greatly enraged. He ridiculed the, the Judeans. Um, first of all, when we begin to walk and a, like walk in the calling that God has placed on our lives and we begin to rebuild the walls, we begin to um, restore what God has called us to restore and obey God, it infuriates the enemy. And then the first thing he does is he attacks our person. He attacks our identity. He begins to mock and scoff. Um, and really with the um, intent of causing us to doubt ourselves, who we are. Um, because here in Nehemiah chapter 3, um, Sanvalat began to just jeer at, you know, and mock the the. The Judeans and what they were doing. Are they going to rebuild anything they want? Are they going to sacrifice? Are they going to finish today? Are they going to recover useful stones from the piles of rubble? Burned rubble at that. Whatever they're building, why? If even a fox went up, he would knock their stone wall down. So he is um, just ridiculing the the Judeans here whenever they began to do what God had called them to do. So um, that is enemy's tactic number one, attack the person, make us doubt ourselves, make us doubt that we are useful, make us doubt that what um, God has given us to do, like he, he just wants us to think that it's hopeless with what we have. Um, then, um, oh, it's, it says, so we kept building the wall which was soon joined together and completed to half its height all the way around because the people worked with a will. God wants us to be working with a will, united and working with a will, strong will, um, just determined. Um, and then ne Nehemiah chapter four, it says, but when Sanvalat, Tovia, and the Arabs, the Ominim, and Ashdo, Ashdodim, heard that the repairs on the walls of Jerusalem were going forward and the breaks were being filled in, they became very angry. All of them together plotted to come and fight against Jerusalem and thus throw us into confusion. So that's enemy's tactic number two. When attacking our personhood and what we're called to do, like he wants us to doubt ourselves and to believe that it's hopeless whatever God has called us to do. When that doesn't work and we continue to work with a will, his next tactic is to throw us into confusion. He wants us to be confused about where we are, what we're doing, 
are we doing the right thing? Um, he, he wants to discourage us and just to be confused, to doubt what we're doing and um, if, if what we're doing is the right thing or what God has called us to do or maybe we didn't hear God right. Maybe God wants us to do something else. Oh, this looks shiny and pretty over here. What's that? Like he wants to distract us and confuse us and to doubt us. Okay, continue. However, we prayed to our God and because of them organized a watch against them day and night. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to bring um, our confusion to God. Pray to God. Bring your confusion to God. Bring your questions to God. Bring your doubts to God. Bring it all to God because if Adam and Eve would have done that in the beginning, hey, the enemy's over here saying this, God, what do you say? Remind us of the truth. Remind us of the truth because when we come into the presence of God, he is truth, he is light, there is no darkness in him. Confusion has to scatter. There is no confusion in God or nor in the plans of God. So we can be comforted that whatever confusion questions we have, we can bring them to God and he will clear them up. Um, and he wants us to organize a watch against the enemy day and night. He wants us to be watchful. He wants us to be mindful. Come to, come to God with your questions, work with a strong will, stand firm, and be watchful, be alert, because the enemy does encircle us and you know prowl around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He wants us to be confused. Um, Judah was saying, the strength of the people who carry loads away is starting to fail and there is so much rubble that we can't build the wall. The enemy wants us to be discouraged he, when our strength begins to fail. When our strength begins to fail, when, it's, when we start to fail, when we start to feel weak, he wants us to get into a place where we're like, I'm not strong enough and this is too much. This is too much for me. I'm not strong enough. This is too much for me. We can't build a wall. Our enemies were saying they won't know or see anything until we have already infiltrated them and begun killing them and stopping the work. And even the Judeans living near them came and must have said to us ten times, from every place you must come back to us. So when our strength begins to fail, you know, when, when we feel like, because I've, I've been here, when you feel like you're not strong enough, I can't do this. Um, yeah, it just, he wants us to be discouraged. Um, and then even the Judeans living near them came and must have said to us 10 times that from every place he must come back to us. Um, there will be others who, and again, our enemy is not a flesh and blood. So the enemy working behind the scenes um, will, you know, throw those, those, seeds of temptation at us, hoping that it will catch and grow in it, in our hearts that um, maybe we ought to go back. Maybe we ought to just go back. This is too hard. This is too heavy. I'm tired. I can't do this. I'm confused. I'm discouraged. Maybe I ought to go back. That's exactly where the enemy wants you to be, okay? So, um, in the lower parts of the space behind the wall, I stationed men according to their families with their swords, spears, and bows, uh, bows. After inspecting them, I stood up and addressed the nobles, leaders, and the rest of the people. So um, he stationed men according to their families their, with their swords, spears, and bows. Um, God wants us to you know, be united in community within the children of God, um, which I haven't been very good at. <laughs> Just confession time. I've been pretty... Um, just in my bubble as a hermit, uh, but it's comforting to know that God uh, would have Nehemiah that would be um, woven into the strategy that God gave him, that he would have Nehemiah um, station men according to their families. So um, God wants us to be united with our families. He wants us to stand, you know, arm in arm with our families um, because isolation is not good. Um, Okay, after stationing them and um, inspecting them, 
Nehemiah says, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and fearful and fight for your brothers, sons, daughters, wives, and homes. Yes, don't be afraid of them. Cast out that spirit of fear. God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind, the spirit of adoption. Um, just cast out fear. Don't be afraid. And remember that God Almighty is with us. Remember that he is right here with us, that he who is great and fearful is with us. And fight, fight for your families, fight for your homes. And um, just continuing on, when our enemies heard that the plot was known to us and God had foiled their plans, that's what I'm on here doing today. I want, um, and that's what God was doing with me. The spirit of the Lord was showing me. He was revealing the plan of the enemy. He was revealing um, the plot that was, that was formed against us. Um, and God will foil his plans. So there is strength, and I'm just gonna reach for my charger here because I don't want my phone to die. Um, there is strength when God, um, there's just this renewed strength that comes when God reveals the enemy's plans. Um, and that's what I wanna come on here today to do, to reveal, to expose the enemy's plans, to discourage you, to confuse you, to throw you into um, a state of hopelessness and um, he wants us to believe that you're not enough, that you're not strong enough, but he who is great and fearful will accomplish it. His zeal will accomplish it. His spirit, not by force, not by might, but by his spirit, says the Lord, will accomplish this in and through us that we can stand firm, we can stand with our families, we can take hold of the weapons of light that God gives us. Uh, that is the word of God, we can stand firm and trust God and um, just be encouraged in that and continue the work. Continuing on, as they continued building the wall, those who carried loads held their loads with one hand and carried a weapon in the other. When they were carrying the load with both hands, with both arms, with all their strength that they could muster up, they began to fail. But it's interesting that whenever they carried the load with one hand and a weapon in the other, they were equipped with strength to continue building. Building with one hand, a weapon in the other, that's what God wants us to do. And what is our weapon? The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Trusting God, a breastplate of righteousness, right? Righteousness is trusting God. So trusting God and clinging clinging tightly to that sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. As for the construction workers, each one had his sword sheathed at his side. That is how they built. Have your sword ready. The man to sound the alarm on the shofar, the trumpet, stayed with me. I said to the nobles, the leaders, and the rest of the people, this is a great work and it is spread out. That's huge. This is a great work. This is a huge endeavor that we are taking on, but it is spread out amongst the children of God. Um, it's not just on you and it's not just on me. It is a work that is great, but it is spread out. Um, it's interesting just to know, like, if you have a very heavy object and you place it on a single strong um, uh, item or pillar, it's gonna topple over and it's gonna just topple that, that pillar over. It's just too much weight to, to, um, to be held, to be supported by only one pillar. But when you take multiple pillars and spread out the load, it can carry it. And I think that's what God wants us to do right now is to understand that, hey, we're not doing this alone. This is spread out amongst the whole body of Christ. And his strength is made perfect in our weakness. So it's truly not even our, our own strength. God wants us to be strong, but to know where our, the source of our strength comes from. It doesn't come from our flesh. 
It doesn't come from our ability. No, the source of our strength comes from God so we can do this together. Um, yes, this is a great work and it is spread out. We are separated on the wall, one far from another, but wherever you are, when you hear the sound of the shofar come to that place to us, our God will fight for us. The battle is God's. The battle is not ours. Yes, we are called to show up, take our positions, fight, and be, and be obedient to what God has called us to do, but to know that our God will fight for us. Um, greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world, and God will fight for us. The battle is his. So we kept doing the work. Half of them held spears from daybreak until the stars appeared. Also at that time, I told the people, let everyone be with a servant. Stay the night within Jerusalem so that at night they can, be, they can be a guard for us even as they work during the day. I, my kinsmen, my servants, and my bodyguards never took off our clothes and everyone who went to get water took his weapon. Um, we just need to be united. We need to... Um, not do this alone. It's interesting. I, I had a dream um, a while back, and I believe I shared it on here at some point, but a while back where um, we were brought into a courthouse and everyone had a weapon in their hand. But then an enemy came in and infiltrated the courthouse and had seemingly bigger weapons, but there were fewer of them. There were more of us than there was of the enemy. And the enemy had separated us into smaller groups and separated us into these rooms to isolate us. The enemy wants us to be isolated right now. He wants us to be alone. Um, but God calls us to be together, even if we are um, spread out we are not alone. We are working united with the other brothers and sisters, the children of God. So I just want everyone to be encouraged out there that um, bring your questions. If you, go, if you get into a place of doubt, isolation, um, hopelessness, um, your strength, just you're tired, you're exhausted, your strength is failing, bring all of that to God and to continue the work. Trust God to eradicate, to cast out confusion and to clear up any questions, to stand firm, to keep hold of the word of God and to work in tandem with the other children of God, and to not be alone. And you're never alone, even if you're separated. Like even if you're, like it says, it's, it's, it's interesting. We are separated on the wall one far from another. Right now it feels like the children of God are separated because, you know, the governments of this world, the nations, um, the rules, you know, the, the, the laws at this time or the, the, basically we're not allowed to gather in big groups so we may feel separated on the wall far from another but we are not alone we are working rebuilding this wall doing the work that god has called us to do with god and with one another the work continues the enemy cannot stop the work and it enrages him so continue 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 god bless you and have a great day